Okay, welcome back to the Palooka Watch Channel. I'm Mike. This is an MWC, that's Military Watch Company, watch. All right, obviously, you can see from the case, looks a lot like a Rolex Submariner. This is a design that, you know, many watch companies copy. This happens to be a Swiss company. It's made in uh, Zurich. It's a well-made watch. On their website, it sells for, I think, about $450. You can find it on eBay for closer to $400, bucks, sometimes under three. I bought this used for just under 100 bucks. I got a great deal on it. It has um, <clears throat> a little, there you go, scratch right there on the lens right here, just underneath that um, hour hand. It's got the Mercedes hour hand. And I thought I had something else up here. Yeah, right right above the MWC. It's not really a, it's kind of a scratch, not really deep in the lens. This happens to have a Sapphire Crystal, a Miyota 8215 automatic movement. It's an awesome watch. Eh, let's get some specs out of the way for you here. I just did this, but I'll do it again. So I wanted to make sure. It's a 42 millimeter case if you're measuring at the bezel. All right, but if you flip it over and you just measure the case, the bezel actually hangs past the case. You see this here? Just a bit. So um, I believe it's closer to a 40 millimeter case or a 41 millimeter case if you're just measuring. Yeah, it's about 41 millimeters there. It's, uh, it's, got, it's not super thick, 13.7. Thirteen point eight. It's got a uh, what do we got here? Twenty millimeter lug width and lug to lug. I believe it's under fifty, um, but barely. Yeah, Forty-eight point five. I'm getting here. Uh, crowns, good size crowns. Probably a six, seven, yeah, seven millimeter crown. I'd call it. And uh, it's a great watch. It's brushed. Case is all brushed everywhere. Slight chamfer with, eh, you know, I mean, could you call that a polishing? I don't think so. Crown nicely tucked. This is a 300 meter water resistant watch. Loom is okay. You can kind of see it right here. Uh, I will say that the pip looms for crap. It's a crappy loom pip. I'd almost want to remove that and buy loom and set it in a hole. <laughs> But I like this. I have a few others. Uh, you know what? Hang on. So as I was saying, um, I have two other watches here that are also of a similar case. These are both Chinese watches. This is a Tandorio GMT. This is a copy of the uh, Rolex GMT. The one that it's, it's similar to one that Magnum wore uh, starting in season four of that series. And that's why I bought it. I got a really good deal on this. This is an excellent watch. I, I'm not sure if I did a video on this yet. This is an Addy's Dive version, and it is a quartz. So you can pick these up real cheap. Sometimes you can find them for 40, 50 bucks. Typically, they cost a little bit more. They're fine watches, but you should be able to see the difference in quality just looking at these, right? I don't know if you can, but I can. <laughs> um, this is a flat sapphire with a cyclops, same as on this watch here. Uh, but you'll notice on this watch, we have a dome. And this is a single dome. Single dome, double dome. Uh, I'm going to have to draw that for you, I think. But basically, your single dome is flat across the bottom. And, it, and it, that's why you get the distortion when you look through it. Okay? If it was a double dome, it would be domed. But when you turned it like this, you would see the dial clearly here. Now, I don't know if it's reading on camera well. I just, it's, it looks milky to me. <clears throat> and so what I want to do next is I want to actually open this up, double check the movement. Again, it's supposed to be a, be a Miyota uh, automatic movement and see if I can clean the backside of that lens. And I'm going to do it because this watch right here, this is a Denver Mint. It's a uh, homage to the Captain Willard, the Seiko, was it the 6108, I believe? I think it came out like 69, 70. Um, nice watch. 
But if you watch my video on the Captain Willards, you'll notice on this watch that the well, you don't know it's the back of the glass, but it looks like there's like spottiness or something on the in the in the crystal. So I actually open this up, remove the movement and the dial and everything, and I clean the glass, and now it's mint. The Detroit mint. So it's a beautiful watch. I will probably sell this watch uh, at some point. It came on a metal bracelet as well, which I also have. So keep that in mind. So I'm thinking, as we look at the details on this watch, just point out that we have applied indices on the dial. MWC, the L, the 1,000 uh, feet or 300 meter military automatic, it's all printed, as are the minute markers along the chapter ring. We have a metal framing of all the indices. The loom is excellent. Again, Mercedes hand, hour hand, fence post, minute hand, loom second hand, matte black, you know, just a flat black dial. It's got a, it's supposed to have an anti-reflective coating, I believe. It, they say it's a ceramic insert, but it has the look of aluminum, which I like. The bezel action on this is phenomenal. And there's no back play, which is sweet. And I believe it lines up, although I went too far. We all do it when we're looking at this through the uh, camera. But there you go. But a fact, though. One thing I don't like about it is uh, the case. They didn't chamfer this. So that spring bar is very close to the edge of the case. You guys have seen me with my Aragons where I have to take that down to fit a thick piece of leather. I was running it on this, which is the 007 band from uh, Goldfinger. I think it's perfect for this watch, okay? Now, let's go ahead and, okay, I just also wanna point out, obviously there's a date feature. And today is the first, this is keeping accurate time, and it is a beautiful watch. And it, like I said, it's got some heft to it. Let's go ahead and try to, in real time, as best we can here, let's get some watch tools out and see if we can, Get this back off. Uh, hang on. All right, let's see. I should put a piece of plastic on this. All right, let's just, uh, you want to put some plastic on this because it will keep you from scratching your case if you slip. And this feels like it's on there. There we go. Let's make this easy on ourselves. All right, it is an automatic movement as it's supposed to be. No markings inside the case. It looks like it's got a little schmutz in it. We see this movement running. Well, now that's interesting. This says it's an NH35, and it's supposed to be a Miota. So... I don't know what that means. That is very strange. That's not what this is supposed to be. Although I'm happy, I know this movement. So we will unlock the crown. It's a locking screw down crown. Get this rotor out of the way here. All right, and I believe let me do this off camera because I can't look through the camera and do it, but there's a little lever I got to push to remove this. There we go. All right, this should pop out. Alright, put 
that to the side. And now we'll look at this glass here. And I don't know if you can see it. It's going to be hard to see on screen here. I'm going to wipe the front and see if it changes anything from this back side. Yeah, there's definitely schmutz inside this lens. I can see it. And that already helped. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a little bit of glass cleaner in here, and then I'm going to wipe it dry, and I'm going to put it all back together. All right. Microcloth work here. All right, I'm going to put this back together. All right, sorry, I did all that without the camera on, but I think I got it back together here. Oh yeah, look, the milkiness is gone. So, let's make sure we got this lined up right. This is like, it's tedious stuff. I don't enjoy tedious things. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I've been staying away from doing a lot of watch work so far. saw this and I couldn't tell if it was outside or inside. I think that mark right there at the th number three is on the inside. I want to open it up again. Let me do all that and I'll put it back together and I'll be right back. All right. Well, whatever that is, it's on the outside. I thought it was on the inside. I can kind of feel that with my fingernail. because I've really cleaned the inside of this and there's just no way. Um, nothing else in there all right let's uh, get this thing back together here Make sure that movement holder is seated, right? Looks right. There we go. That's in. Winding, I can screw this down, and now I can put the back cover on. Let's wipe that out right quick. Working around the camera, I'm not used to it. I'm not pushing hard on this. In case I was to slip, I wouldn't want to scratch it. We'll put the plastic on there and tighten that up in a moment. But there we go. So that's a much better dial, a view of the dial rather, without all the cloudiness that we were seeing. Of course, we can see imperfections on the uh, crystal, but that is all on the top side. Again, I did buy this used. I'll tell you what, getting rid of that milkiness, oh my god, look how much nicer that is. Go back and look at the very beginning of the video where you could see where I was turning this and it just looked milky. Now, as I pointed out with the Detroit Mint, right, it came like that. So 
people might buy a watch like this and get it and they're looking at it and they're going, man, I just, I don't like the way that that looks. It doesn't look like that lens is clear. It's a brand new watch and you're wondering what the heck happened. Well, sometimes the quality control just is not that great. And that's what happened here. Now, this watch, uh, this is from 2015. Okay, so this watch is already nine years old. And from what I understand, I'm going to have to do some research. You guys can tell me. It is supposed to come with a Miyota movement, but I'm seeing the NH35 in here. <clears throat> so I don't know what that means. Maybe in 2015, well, they must have come with the NH35 unless somebody replaced it. Now, there's no fingerprints on the inside. That was just a nice, even coating of, I mean, it looked like somebody smoked a cigarette and blew the smoke in there, you know. So at any rate, uh, going through everything you just watched on this watch. I'm actually very happy with it. Let's go ahead and do a wrist shot. I just want to point out, this is so tight that when it's going through, it wants to drag on the case and it messes up the band. So I've been burning it with a lighter. I also trimmed the length on this, but again, pulling it through, it pulls the fibers out. So I have to burn that again. And this was a double pass. All right, meaning it was a NATO style. And when I say NATO style, it's because you see the one buckle here, right? That's just a NATO style. That's not a NATO uh, band. This is a NATO band. All NATO bands will have two buckles. And what you want to do, I showed this before, is you want to, they're designed so that you come through like this. You come through both of them, all right? You put your, your strap through both of them like that. And then you roll back around, you go through this one, and then you pull it, all right? That's how a NATO strap is supposed to work. Uh, that puts all the pressure right there. That's, that's it. You're locked in. This watch can slide back and forth between these two points now a bit. Once it's on your wrist, it won't. This is the Volstock. And it puts all the pressure there. No pressure on the spring bars, okay? Now I've turned this into a Zulu strap, which is a single pass strap. I left the tag on it. It is a Barton. Bartons are pretty decent quality uh, watch bands. So I might as well leave it on there. And uh, now we can see what this looks like on the wrist. Okay, and there we have it. You know, 42 millimeter watch. Uh, when you consider you're measuring from the bezel, which is the widest part here, on a seven and five eighths inch wrist with your James Bond gold finger band. It's the naval, I believe it's the uh, British Navy uh, colors there. I can't really recall. But that looks so much better now that I took it apart and cleaned the back side of that crystal. Amazing. So you saw, I mean, it was, it looked, if it looked tedious to you, it was. But it was easy, not that difficult. And I'm stoked with this. These other ones that I have, right, again, this I bought this because I got a really good deal on it. I'll probably give it to someone as a gift, possibly sell it. This one, these are all new. This one I did size for my wrist, but I've never worn it outside the house. I've only put it on while I was in the apartment, uh, you know, not very long. It's still a brand new watch, uh, no scratches or anything like that. And I still have all the box and papers for it. So I'm going to put these back in their boxes, and I think that they're neat. But this is a real heavy-duty, you know, made in Switzerland uh, military watch from the military watch company. Now, obviously, the movement is not a Swiss movement, but the case is. And I wish there was a way for me to show you through the screen and explain. Maybe we can kind of see the milling, you know, on this bezel here. It's beautiful. It is beautifully done. This is your Chinese version, which looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie, but it's all shiny. The problem with a polish is that the polish is also going to show imperfections as soon as they happen. That's the only issue with them. This is very sharp to the touch here. So, again, on this watch here... Everything's brushed, which is what you would want. We got a little, a few marks here on the brush, on the brushed sides of the case. Again, it's a used watch. It is nine years old. For nine years old, this thing has not been worn very much. 
At least it doesn't appear to be. Maybe it came from a smoky home and smoke just kind of got underneath the lens somehow. I don't know. But the brushing just looks awesome. And again, if, let's see if we can compare the crown tuck. This has a sign crown. But I got to tell you, these Addy's Dive watches, they do a nice job on this. Although you could see here that these crowns, they're not doing as much work. This here, these crowns are really wrapping around, the guards rather, the, the crown guards really wrapping around that crown guard to protect it. And keep in mind, the, the, the watch that James Bond wore was a Rolex Submariner. You can see my reflection, I'm wearing a bandana. It's warm here, and I was working on this, and I started sweating. I was about to drip sweat off my face into the movement, so I thought I better put the bandana on. Anyhow, Bond's watch, I think he was wearing a 53 Rolex and had no crown guards. And if you guys remember, his band was too thin, so you see gaps on the side. Which I have one of these that is thinner. I could put it on here, but it's not the same watch anyhow, so there's no point in that. You can see the loom already. I don't think I need to even give you a separate loom shot here. This thing really pops. Again, just the pip is very weak. So my only complaints on this watch are the spring bars being too close to the case and the pip is garbage. The loom pip on the bezel, in my opinion. Keep in mind, nine-year-old watch. So, you know, that's it. This is another, you know, Palooka watch channel uh, uh, review of a watch that... I'm not a professional watch guy. <laughs> I'm just into them. I'm going to keep showing you stuff, hoping that you guys dig on it. If you can find this watch in the $200 range, I don't know what that crazy whistling was outside. I had to turn the camera off there. But yeah, if you could find this watch for around 200 bucks, I think it's a steal because of the quality. I think that the price that they're asking on the website, if you're buying a new one, is a fine price because the quality, the workmanship on this watch, the toughness of it, it is designed and built specifically for military use. What does that mean? That means it's built to be abused. This watch is built to take abuse. That's what it's for. Beat the crap out of it. They talk about the crystal. <clears throat> As I was saying, this has a flat bottom to the glass. What does that mean? That means that this glass, this, this is very thick glass. This, while it is a sapphire crystal, it's flat. So this is going to be one plane, same thickness all the way across, versus this one, it's going to be flat on the bottom and it raises on the top, that's thicker, that makes it tougher. We all know that tool watches like with Seiko, they want to put, and they do, they put hardlex crystals because they're relatively shatter proof, but they take a lot of scratches. So if you look at this lens and you can see these little marks on it, that means that it took a blow at some point and it didn't break. So that's a good sign. I, I was thinking today, I think I should do a, a, a video and keep it to crystals because I have so many watches now with all types of different, I mean, there's box you know, or top hat crystals, there's single dome, double dome, there's super high double dome crystals that I have, of course, all the flat crystals, hard lex versus sapphire. If I was to put a bunch of watches out and then talk about that, I could point them out and it'd be easier for you guys to understand when you're reading, you would have the visual aid to go along with it. I think this is my nicest Submariner uh, clone watch, and I'm planning to keep this watch. This is for me. Like I said, some of these others I'm going to be moving. And that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoy this. Have a great day. Be kind to one another. Come back often. Tell your friends. And I'm about to go do my Sunday night chat video, so hope you enjoy that.